You're listening to Ecto Portal, a journey into the unknown with Anthony Anderson and Verna Wilson. I hope that you are seated comfortably with the light turned down and the curtains drawn. Once again, to another journey into the unknown, the unexplored, the unexplained, Ecto Portal. I'm Anthony Anderson, your host, and I'm here with my co-host. Verna Wilson, and uh, the controversial, too. The controversial Verna Wilson? Well, the con- well, you said the <laughs> unknown, the unexplained, but also oh, it's the, the controversial. The yes. controversial, yeah. yes, well, absolutely. And that, of course, uh, would be connected to uh, medium Lenora Piper in today's show. And yes. most mediums from the Victorian era, the spiritualist era, are controversial, really. They are controversial, but I notice that a lot. Um, I notice that the controversial ones are usually the ones that start out very talented, and people, and that's and when reluctant. they're reluctant. Ta- I notice they're reluctant, reluctant, a lot, too. and talented. Yep. Right. So. Um, if they made news, it usually means that there was something good about them to begin with. Well, we're going to go ahead and go mm-hmm. into that. And I noticed in some cases with some of these mediums, uh, it starts out with a bang. Something genuinely happens. And there's other people that seem to swarm around them to exploit it. Right. And somewhere along the line, something always seems to go crooked. And that poor person has to deal with the aftermath of that. Right. And then and then they have to deal with the, the rest of their life. Mm-hmm. And they're known as somebody who was a fraud because they had to perform or because um, they weren't, they, everything wasn't 100% accurate. Mm-hmm. So they, so anyway, things start out good. Sometimes it doesn't always end good, but we'll talk about that. So this is, what is this? The late 1800s, right? This is, this is the late 1800s. Was from? Yeah. Lenora, from America. Lenora Piper. She, she was born in 1857. She was an American, she was described as an American trance medium and she was the subject of intense um, investigation by the American and British Psychic Research Association during the early 20th century. Okay. Yeah. And she grew up in uh, New Hampshire, I believe it's called the city of Nashua, where according to um, her parents, uh, she displayed, she first displayed psychic abilities as a child. And I think actually as a child, she was very lucky that her parents noticed it and they encouraged it. Mm -hmm. At the age of 22, she married um, William Piper of Boston, Massachusetts, who was a shopkeeper. She settled in Beacon Hill, uh, the Beacon Hill area. And she really didn't... um, uh, she didn't do anything that um, was very showy when it came to her readings, like um, levitate uh, tables or, or um, you know, or spill or ex, ex, uh, spill ectoplasm or things like that. She didn't do anything very showy. She wasn't a physical but a mental medium, uh, and I personally, I think more most mediums are mental mediums. Mm-hmm. Um, I would I would say, I think. To classify as a true medium, I think you would have to have predominantly mental abilities. Uh, uh, mental abilities. I agree with you. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be a magician, right? Well, y- yeah. Isn't well, that a weird like differentiation well, between them? I'm, I would say not necessarily a magician, but I would say um, if you have other gifts that aren't other than mental, and you're good at, and you're good at displaying those, yeah. those are probably going to be your dominant gifts, but. It's the mental that's going to be that I feel is what's going to um, is what's going to bring it out. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. Yeah. 
but, but she and she um, also did automatic writing on occasion. And there's a lot of mediums who do who still. Uh, do automatic writing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, and they do it a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's still something that's being taught these days or being worked with. You never know what the outcome's going to be with automatic writing, especially if you have a specific target or someone very specific comes through. That's true. And you know, something about automatic writing, I'm just going to say it really quickly here. A lot of novelists and people who do uh, creative writing, uh, they've, they've come up with things that people say, wait a minute. How did you come up with that? Because that really happened when they're writing about something and they don't really know. They're just kind of putting a scene in their mind. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, it just came to my imagination. That's kind of automatic writing, um, but not necessarily on purpose. I would say because it's inspiration from the spirit, but you, that's how the creative process comes through. So remote viewers uh, use automatic writing a lot in what they do because they have a specific target in mind and they have to draw images, shapes, and actually write what they see mm -hmm. when they're remote viewing. That, that would that make sense. that is a variation of automatic writing as well because you're... It's a different way, different way of automatic writing because obviously in this traditional sense of a uh, spiritual medium, automatic writing is you're writing messages from somewhere else, from someone else. In automatic writing and remote viewing, you're literally writing what you visually see mentally in your abilities onto paper. So I guess that would be the difference. It's still like a form it's, it's of automatic it's very, writing. It's very similar. It's, yeah. very, it's very similar. I agree. I think there's different ways of automatic writing, but hers obviously is the one where she's sitting with the pen and paper, mm -hmm. and she's getting inspired by the spirit messages, and, right, and then yeah. um, her hand starts moving. And the, and the spirit's like moving it through her, kind of like a Ouija board, mm -hmm. almost, yeah. Well, anyway, um, the supporters of, um, of, of Piper, uh, who, were, who were spiritualists themselves, they claimed that she could channel um, m many spirits through her consciousness. And the problem with, um, with that interpretation um, from the spiritualists is that Piper herself con uh, admitted that her trans personalities were not spirits, and many of the things she said in her trans sessions proved to be false. So she claims she really couldn't do it. So if it's not spirits, then who's writing through her? Exactly. So now there was a British hypnotist and psychical researcher named um, Simeon Edmonds, and he wrote... Uh, in contrast to the extravagant claims made by the vast majority of mediums, Mrs. Piper herself was not convinced that the information obtained through her came from discarnate sources or that her controls were in fact the spirits that they purported to be. One of, the early, one of her early controls, who called himself Finute, was obviously fictitious, um, although he claimed to be the spirit of a French doctor who lived in Marse and Marseille, Marcel's, um, that he knew, but uh, he knew but little of French and less of medicine. Um, they saw all attempts to verify his statements met with failure, and one investigator invented um, a dead niece who he named Bessie Beale and requested that Mrs. Piper's um, to contact her spirit and messages from the non-spirit were duly given. See, that's so. interesting right there. That means someone went out to disprove her. This Apparently this guy mm -hmm. invented somebody that he wanted her to contact from the beyond, and she actually con sit, claimed to have contacted him, and uh, the non-existent spirit was duly given. So that makes you start to wonder too there's a little skepticism there like but then again you're entrapping someone right but if if that person doesn't really exist then who you contact then then what are, then what are you picking up you know on what I mean? yeah it could go either way i th i think the mind is capable of picking up on lots of things um it could be from the subconscious and it could be someone else that it she could be someone else that's that she not tempted. this fictitious absolutely spirit. that's right well, the scientific community rejected the telepathic and spiritual hypothesis, and they wrote that there is uh, they wrote that there is no need to resort to the paranormal, as fraud and psychology explain the mediumship of Piper. Um, so the psychologists G. Stanley Hall and Amy Tanner, Tanner who um, who observed some of the trances of of, of uh, Mrs. Piper, uh, wrote that the ex wrote the explanation was in terms of the subconscious mind harboring various personalities that pretended to be spirits or controls, and we we just said that actually. Yep, yep. So they said the same thing we did. So Piper uh, has subconsciously absorbed information that she later regurgitated as messages from spirits in her trances. 
And now the psychical researchers and scientists who investigated her also believe that she was fraudulent. So not all of them believed her. Mm -hmm. And Andrew Lang, um, the famous author, uh, and, I, and I, I do know that I collect his books. I do know that he was into spiritualism. Uh, he wrote that Piper would cheat uh, when she could by making guesses and would try to get information out of her sitters, which we all know as cold readers. Yep, cold, cold readers, reading. yeah. Yep. Maybe she was one of the first cold readers out there. And um, a detailed... Um, a, de a detailed explanation of uh, from Piper was by the psychologist Ivor Lloyd Tuckett, who examined her mediumship in 75 pages and came to the conclusion that it could be explained by muscle reading, fishing, guessing, hints obtained in the sitting, knowledge, uh, in the sitting knowledge that was obtained and knowledge acquired in the interval between sittings and, all, and lastly, facts that were already within her knowledge. Cold reading. Cold reading, <laughs> that's yeah. That's the exact that's, description that's, of that's, cold that's, what, that's what he was describing, yeah. and of course, in so many words. Yeah. So, so those were her mistakes, and you know, in, in my opinion about why she was doing this, mm -hmm. I think that if, okay, I think that if you put somebody under pressure to produce something, mm -hmm. I think um, you're going to get fraudulent results. You're going to get the results you well, want. I think it's remember what I mentioned before. When you have someone who has a genuine ability and someone else comes along to exploit it, they set them up on all these sittings exhaustively nonstop, that person then feels obligated to produce something. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. if they have things that creep in from they heard from around them the day before, mm -hmm. uh, a few minutes ago, and it suddenly that makes its way into the session, they say, well, that's fraudulent. She just included that information or she guessed. Well, you're making her do these things nonstop. And if she doesn't produce, then what is she going to get? Grief. Right. And if she does produce and it's fake, she's going to get grief. And th that's right. And also... <laughs> But, but however, if she did try to fish information ahead of time, mm -hmm. that wasn't good either. If she really did no, try. She was, if she knew what she was consciously doing as a cold reader, like, okay, I don't have these answers, but I know how I can produce enough so they think they have answers. So that, right. So, so if she did that, that wasn't right. right. But, but also, if she did all this stuff under pressure, I can see where they're not going to be happy and where she's probably... Just going. She's she's just going to produce whatever comes to her head. Mm -hmm. So, and I I'm and as a medium here on my on my end, I've had people try to try to pressure me and and uh, get stuff out of me too. Well, and it isn't always something you can turn on and off. Either. It isn't. It really There's isn't. There's a lot of circumstances. I, I think Mrs. Piper should have explained that to them, yeah. but maybe she did. Maybe they didn't listen. Who knows? But anyway, she made a lot of mistakes. And uh, the information um, about those mistakes can be found in books by um, Ivor uh, Lloyd Tuckett, Edward, um, which wrote it in 1911, um, Edward Claude which, um, from 1917, Walter Mann, who wrote a book in 1919, and Joseph McCade, 1920, Joseph Wren, 1950, and Martin Gardner, 2003. So everybody's been writing about her stuff yeah. since um, all this time. So um, anyway... Um, so some of her accusations that, that people have claimed in some of these books, mm -hmm. uh, Piper's supposed spirit controls made false predictions. Her control Moses said that a great world war was going to take place. Germany would have no part in it and that it would be caused by Russia and France against England. You know, though, that may that may not have been too fraudulent. A world, a great world war did take place. Yeah, but if, she's it, if it was very before war, specifically claiming who was on what side yeah, and who didn't take part in it. Well, that's true, but but think about it though. A great war did take place, and if this was right before World War One, mm -hmm. that's interesting that they predicted that. And actually, there may have been there that may have been the original cause, but later um, Germany came into it. So who knows? That may not have been totally fraudulent. Or just a little off. <laughs> just a little off. The information's a little off, but a great war did take yeah, place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, her control, Piper's control, Walter Scott, made absurd statements about the planets. He claimed that beautiful creatures lived inside Venus and the sun is populated by dreadful looking creatures, which he described as monkeys that live in caves made out of sand and mud. Her control, Walter Scott, claimed to have visited all the planets, and when asked if he had seen a planet further away from Saturn, answered Mercury. Now I want to okay, point that out. Okay, that one's a little off. I want to point out that when they 
indicate her control Walter Scott. That is the person she's getting information from on the other side. I hope it's Walter not the Scott. author. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, yeah, exactly. That is someone she claims provides her information to questions. To answer questions. So uh, That her, sounds like a hallucination right there. <laughs> I'm just sorry. <laughs> it's a little far-fetched. Yeah. Uh, Piper's Control, who claimed to be the writer George Pilu, did not know any Greek or philosophy, but during his life, Pilu was well-educated in these subjects. Pilu's family members were shown the communications of Piper's Control, and they were ins insulted by what they had read. A cousin of Pilu declared that the impersonation was beneath contempt, and that his brother said the communications were nothing like the real Pilu, and were utter drivel and insanity. Now, Piper's, wow. Piper's Control Finuit who claimed to be a French doctor, would speak very little French and had no knowledge of medicine, and his historical existence, of course, couldn't be verified by the researcher William James, described uh, the Finuit communications as tiresome twaddle. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> now, and he was from our cell, um, claimed to be yeah. The, yeah, from our cell. Okay. Piper's control, who claimed to be the deceased physical her psychical researcher, Edmund Gurney, was heavily criticized by a parapsychologist who had known Gurney during his life. Frank Podmore, who wrote that control, sounded nothing like the personality of the real Gurney. William James also strongly rejected the claims that Gurney communicated through Piper. Now, before his death, the psychical researcher, Frederick Myers, left a message in a sealed envelope. Pyre, Piper's Myers control failed to reveal the message. The Myers control of Piper also failed to understand Greek and Latin. This was unlike the real Myers, who was a classical, a class, classicist scholar. Sorry, the Hodgson control of Piper sounded nothing like the real Richard Hodgson. When friends put test questions to control of Hodgson about his early life in Australia. The answers were all wrong, and before he died, Hodgson had written a test letter and claimed that if he was to communicate through Piper, he would reveal the contents inside the letter. Piper's Hodgson control failed to reveal the test letter. That's sad. It, it is, it's <laughs> it's kind of sad. It is. Sad. I'm kind of. I hate to say this. I'm kind of feeling a little sorry for her. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, Thomas Barkworth, who held the hand of Piper in one of her seances, accused her of practicing muscle reading. Piper liked to hold a client's hand throughout a sitting or even to place the hand against her, their forehead. But spiritualists used to do that a lot back then. They used to hold hands mm -hmm. during the... So I don't see what was wrong with that, but whatever. Uh, the, the English astronomer George Darwin, uh, he a attended two seance sittings with Piper anonymously. And the control of Piper um, mentioned names, but according to Darwin, not a single name or person was given correctly, although perhaps nine of 10 were mm, named. That's pretty bad, nine out of 10 wrong. <laughs> that's, that's sad, I'm, I, I, poor Piper. Maybe Piper's not such a good medium. <laughs> Maybe not. So, um, Horace Howard Furness attended a seance with Piper and concluded that she feigned her trances. During the uh, seance, Furness caught Piper with her eyes open, looking at some flowers which he had placed in the room. Now, the Scottish folklorist, um, Andrew Lang, he wrote that Piper would practice cold reading. Mm -hmm. According to Lang, Piper would cheat when she could. That is to say, she would make guesses, try to worm information out of her sitter, describe a friend of his, alive or dead, as Ed, who may be Edgar, <laughs> Edmund, Edward, Edith, or anybody. Interesting. The English classical scholar Walter Leaf attended seances with Piper and described them as unsatisfactory as she got nothing correct. Poor Piper. <laughs> okay, Thomas W. Uh, M. Lund, before a seance with Piper, told another sitter about his son's illness and his wife's plans with an earshot of Mrs. Piper. In the seance, Piper's control mentioned his statements. Lund suggested that Piper was not unconscious during the seance and that she used clever guesswork and other mentalist tricks. Okay, I'm going to defend Piper for a little bit, okay? Even right. if she did use that... <laughs> it's a tall order. <laughs> it's a tall order. I mean, okay... You know, Piper, I'm going to kind of defend Piper a little bit. Even if she got a lot of stuff wrong, if she got a few things right and they were hard and they were facts that were not easy to obtain, I think she's, I think the poor lady's trying. But none of them named the facts that she got right, just the fact that she got almost everything wrong. Well, okay. So much for, <laughs> so much for my defense, right? I'm just saying, 
Uh, the American <laughs> paleontologist uh, Nathaniel Shaler attended some seances with Piper and wrote a letter to William James that he could not exclude the hypothesis of fraud, which is interesting. And in, in, in an experiment um, to test if um, Piper's um, controls were purely fiction, um, the psychologist G. Stanley Hall, he invented a niece called Bessie Beals, which I already explained, mm -hmm. and he asked Piper's Hodgson control, uh, name, I guess his name was Hodgson, to get in touch with it. So Bessie appeared, answered questions, and accepted Dr. Hall as her uncle. That's scary. Piper's Control told Richard Hodgson he would get married and have two children and have a long life, but Hodgson died a few months later unmarried and childless. That's sad. It is sad. Yeah. Well, anyway, modern day um, modern day supporters of Piper of P Lenora Piper include um, devout spiritualists such as Michael Prescott, Michael E. Time, and Greg Taylor, who all ignore her errors and fraud, and they claim that she was in contact with spirits. So she has a lot of modern supporters, and I think, I think they, I think a lot of people, when you look back on it, feel that somebody who had these genuine gifts was probably under the gun, and she was probably uh, pressured to make things up. So she, so a lot of. Um, gibberish came out of it mm -hmm. so like you said it's not something you could turn on it's not something you could just turn on or off like a tap and that's why i hate it when people come up to me or some other readers that i know um and say can you do a reading for me right now what are you getting I'm getting you going away and leaving me alone. <laughs> yeah, I, I have um, I have a re I have a reader friend, um, and we had her and we've we've had her as a guest in and um, in our show before, where this person used to call all the time. They used to just have a regular conversation. All of a sudden, she would say, "Can you do a reading for me?" Jeez. It's it, you know, it, when when you get something and you really get it because you're born with these in, intuitive abilities, and I believe everybody is, but if you're born with extra abilities and it really comes that's when you can feel the real thing coming through and it turns out to be a really good service for somebody but when you have to sit there and and um perform and everybody's looking at you and well that's what i mean by when you take someone who has a genuinely Maybe a small series of gifted moments that does work. Yeah. A family member suddenly goes to get their friend and say, look at this, look at this. Next thing you know, they're on a tour being right. exploited. Right. Having nightly sittings to, expected to come up with all these wonderful things on a regular basis. Now, the only thing I could say about Piper is that she must have been, is that she kept doing it. So she must have been convinced that it would turn out okay because she knew that her gifts were, were genuine or... She made her, This is how she made her living, and she really couldn't get out of or some of these sittings. An, or she was an absolute fraud. She knew it, and she was able to do a lot by cold reading and knew that she could get by with most of this. Because remember, spiritualism then, there was a lot of mediums. There, was there a were. Lot of there seances. were. Seances. People were fascinated by the, the, the idea of contacting a dead loved one or friend or relative or someone from beyond. Right. And even a little sign of something people took as, oh my God, that's absolutely what they would have done. Yeah. And so I, a cold reader could really, you could make some bank I'm during sure this you period. Could. I, I, I'm sure you could. And there weren't that many opportunities for women either. So if you had a genuine gift and it was working for you and well, who knows? Now that you think about, now that you mention that, you read a lot about mediums and mm -hmm. during this time period, there uh -huh. were mostly women. Mostly women. There were some men. Yeah. But mostly predominantly women. Isn't that interesting? It, it is very. It is very Socially. interesting. Socially, and I, I also, th I also kind of wish that the mediums who really, um, who really did a great job and and were genuine. Well, not that these weren't people weren't genuine, but uh -huh. but who weren't who um, weren't under the gun. And I, I wish that they made more news than the ones who were considered fake. But. But maybe maybe they didn't want the publicity, um, the ones who really were doing it as a service and who, you know. I would think if I had a real gift, yeah, I would not want to go on a seance tour circuit to perform nightly for complete strangers. I wouldn't either. I'm not a parlor trick. Yes, I can make some money off of it, but you know what? If I survived up until then mm -hmm. and I had the gift, you would have to make a decision like, 
am I going to make money off this or am I going to keep my gifts and use them as I see fit in my life? Absolutely. So mm-hmm. somewhere along the line, all of these mediums said, you know what, I can make some money off this. Someone talked them into it or they sat down and said, you know what, I could get some extra money on the side. That's true. If I did this. So. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I guess it all depends on the person's um, circumstances. Like we all know about the Fox sisters. They were mm-hmm. they were genuine. They experienced um, real spirit contact. And then later when they were put under the gun, it's usually when, when they're put under the gun and they're, they have to show it off is when, when they're things being start, exploited. They're being exploited and things start to go wrong. That's, what, yeah. that's all I can say. And you're expected to keep up that perform at these seances like mm-hmm. the plasm things rotating the table uh, lifting tipping uh instruments Sing, faces yeah. whatever that's if, a lot i mean physically if it's if you have a real medium and you physically had to bring forth all of this energy to mm-hmm. do all that yeah. nightly do you know how exhausting that's you exhausting i mean even doing it one night is exhausted spirit spirit work is very tiring this is what makes me wonder yeah. some of these mediums I, I guarantee you they were all shams and they were probably in on it and they set it up which looks really bad on the ones that do do it right maybe not as grand on a nightly basis but can actually perform and get information maybe convey messages whatever but the ones that are you know or with a trumpet sounding inside your room uh the table lifting and spinning and people touching people's heads and that kind of stuff now here's a here's another theory that i think could have happened i just wonder if um what if some of these people if they were uh obliged to perform under pressure mm-hmm. if sometimes um, they really did contact somebody or something really happened and it was just an accident and things happened to go well that night. So it can go either way because sometimes when you're, sometimes when, when you're obliged to do something and you're using your powers, mm-hmm. you can subconsciously pick up on something too. Yeah. I mean, it, that's why I, I find it amusing when, whenever you read these seances or, or mm-hmm. stories yeah. of the Victorian you know, spiritualist era where they claim we tried to contact Uncle Albert and he definitely came through. Well, you know what? Just because you make contact, does A, doesn't necessarily mean it's Uncle Albert and doesn't necessarily mean someone else isn't having a bit of fun and saying, yeah, I'm Uncle Albert. That's true. Unless Uncle Albert comes through and says something to to the person Specific. that that was that you really knew about him, mm-hmm. then I would say, yeah, it could be anybody. That's true. I mean, people are people. Whether you're in your physical body Absolutely. or you're in your your element, energy, whatever. That's true. You still are a, a human form, right? And you still have a lot to learn, and, and you can and you, play and with people. You can have fun. Trick <laughs> trickery. Yes. Yeah, you definitely can can do that. I don't you, think people are going to change that much between that. No, no, people do it in life. People probably do it after. So, but I, I really wish that Lenora Piper herself talk spoke for herself because all these people are speaking for her and i kind of feel sorry for the poor lady because she hasn't spoken in her defense in every art and anything i read about her Mm -hmm. so i i kind of wish that she did Uh, she has a lot of modern supporters so that means to me she must have done something good i'd be curious to find out what happened to her though i mean did she give up this did she continue until she was you know old that's true um th- that's it, it it would be it would be interesting to find out what happened to lenora piper uh because she she really didn't have she really didn't talk much for herself uh, i mean if somebody was writing all this stuff about me i would defend myself mm-hmm. now she actually ended up living until um ni- the year 1950 she died on july 3rd and uh, from bronco from bronco um, pneumonia which is sad okay, but see. she she continued to do her readings and she preferred automatic writing as when she is she, so she continued to do them no matter what so all the way into the 50s so all she the way into really the 50s. did that for yeah, a long time for, that's a long time over so, half a century so she must have had faith in what she was doing despite mm-hmm. what happened so well, it sounds like she went back to what she originally did well yeah instead of all the other parlor tricks people wanted her to do she went back to what she did could do right and i think that and i think that's a good thing that she kept at it mm-hmm. so that's interesting yeah and she lived that's a long time so she lived on 1950 that's yeah, interesting that so. is considering when she's she was born in like what 1857 1852 I think. 52 that's a long time she was like 100 and what was she 100 
Wait, what? Wait a minute. 1852 or 1857? Um, 1859. 1857. Yeah, 1857. Yeah, that's a long time. So she lived over 100? I think so, until 1950. That's a long time. Is that when she died in 1950? Yeah. So she lived... Are a little less than hundred, but still, that's a long yeah, time. Yeah, her nineties or something. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 amazing. Yeah, so <laughs> we should all live that long. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, folks, that's about Lenora Piper. Uh, I, I don't hear her name mentioned very much anymore. I've never heard of her until today. So that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I found her. I found her. Um, it actually, in a in a book that was written all about mediums, uh, that was published um, in the in the twentieth century. And it was given to me as a gift, and I'm glad that I've, we, we, we rediscovered her. I'm glad we did. Very cool. Yeah. All right, folks, that's the show this time around. Until next time, bye. See you next week. Bye.